Congratulations on being well on your way to making your laboratory more productive, profitable, and less perplexed by the lab industry jargon, because you are now listening to the LaboratoryApp.com podcast, and I'm your host, John Bowie, here to help you regain your lab's procurement power. This week, our Editor-in-Chief, John Bowie, will be providing tips on how to shop smart and find the best thermocycler for your laboratory applications and protocols. This episode is sponsored by GMI, a trusted distributor of quality thermocyclers in the U.S. Find out more at gmi-inc.com. Let's get this show started. In today's episode, we're going to discuss purchasing the best PCR thermal cycler for your lab. As we all know, PCR is a cost-effective technique used in molecular biology labs to exponentially amplify segments of DNA, creating millions of copies of a specific DNA sequence. With the right PCR thermal cycler, you can achieve a thermally controlled environment for temperature-sensitive samples and reactions. By changing temperature at specific times for particular durations, a thermal cycler can generate multiple copies of DNA and other genetic material fragments for use in downstream applications. Whether for use in diagnostic, cell biology, pharmaceutical, environmental, or food safety labs, finding the most suitable thermal cycler to effectively cater to all your application needs is necessary. Make sure you decide on the perfect unit as we walk you through the factors to consider in the following slides. First, let's determine your application demands. Reviewing what your application demands from you and envisioning the changes your lab may undergo in the future can narrow down your choices. Start by answering these three questions. First, what type of thermocycle are you looking for? For basic tasks like generating nucleic acid sequences, or for sequencing, cloning, or checking reactions on a gel, you can opt for a standard thermocycler, while a digital PCR thermocycler offers DNA quantification like a qPCR, however, not in real time. Question two, what is your expected sample throughput? If you'll be working with a few samples every now and then, you can look for smaller personal cycling systems that can run up to 48 samples at a time. For higher throughput work on a regular basis, think of getting qPCR cyclers, which are dual 48 by 48 well thermocyclers that allow independent protocols to run simultaneously. For instance, when there are many users working with the PCR, Multiple bay cyclers and quad cyclers will really work best. Finally, how much flexibility does your application require? For instantaneous temperature changes during amplification of DNA samples, go for thermocyclers that have a Peltier element for temperature control. Whether for incubating 0.5 or 0.2 ml PCR sample tubes, plates, or PCR strip tubes, a thermal block will come in multiple configurations and handle different sample types and formats. But if you're looking for greater flexibility and sensitivity, go for models that have these blocks in different sizes and capacities. For ultimate flexibility, look for units with universal blocks. In case you shift your focus in the future, you can buy thermal cyclers now that can be upgraded for real-time PCR use later. Number two. What are some essential features and functionalities your PCR thermal cycler should have? A, gradient functionality. If you do not prefer a multi-block thermal cycler, but are still interested in simultaneously running various reactions at different temperatures, you can opt for a unit featuring a thermal block, not heated unit formally, but in a precisely defined gradient. Thermal cyclers with gradient capabilities let you quickly test and pick optimal conditions and the best working temperature for your assays. B, ramp rate. This functionality shows how quickly the heating block can change the selected temperature and complete a specified number of cycles. So for high throughput applications, get a thermal cycler that offers a fast ramp rate, as this would mean faster cycles and run times for you. 
C. Specialized lids. With most PCRs experiencing issues like evaporation and condensation of reaction fluids, which leads to insufficient data or negatively affecting results, it's best to procure thermal cyclers featuring, featuring heated lids. So units with specialized lids provide good sealing, minimize evaporation, and maintain the necessary sample volume uh, to reagent ratio. Tip number three, don't forget to consider the user experience provided by the potential features of your thermal cycler. So the first one we're gonna look at is ease of use. For users who are new to PCR, the definitely like the browser touch screen style is best. Also the ATM style or menu driven thermocyclers are gonna be the easiest ones to operate and give them a very smooth operation, minimizing in any risks of uh, user data entry. Remote access is another potential feature. If you need a system that lets you adjust protocols and view preliminary results wirelessly through a smartphone or tablet, look for a thermal cycler that has networking capabilities. And finally, increasing speed and accuracy is on the top of everyone's priorities. By taking into account the combination of enzyme, plasticware, and instrument you're working with, if you want real rapid ramp rates, uh, buy plates and tubes with ultra-thin walls for better and quicker heat transfer between the block and the software. In conclusion, if you take all these key factors into account before buying a PCR thermal cycler, I'm sure it can help you find the best unit that serves your lab's needs. Thank you. Thank you, John. For any product inquiries, or if you are interested in speaking with a thermal cycler specialist, don't hesitate to contact our sponsor for this week's episode, GMI, at gmi-inc.com. GMI not only showcases new thermal cyclers for your PCR applications, but also supplies a wide selection of affordable, recertified thermal cyclers. Thank you for joining me today. I hope you learned something and I would love to hear your feedback and questions and what you'd like to hear me cover on future shows. So send me an email directly anytime, john at laboratoryapp.com or connect with me on LinkedIn at linkedin.com forward slash IN forward slash J-B-U-I-E or just search John Bowie Lab on LinkedIn to find my profile. You can listen to more episodes on laboratoryapp.com or search Laboratory App on iTunes or Google Play to subscribe. Have a great day of research, and thank you for making our world a better place.